Drivers, start your engines. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Iron Chisel 3 Big One of the NRSL side. Our one of two heats that are going to go on down. Very simple rules that are coming on by as we have 20 drivers. We'll showcase 21st. We got Isaiah Bernick, Kyle Keith, Joshua Sicoli, Mitchell Collins, Anthony Logan, Bobo Jones, Kev Shear, Jonathan Zorlin, Connor Meyer, Keith Batson, Elijah Leonard, Vince Almariego, Casey Nananko, Charles Sanfer. RJ Bishop, Zach Rogers, Angel Navarro, Zach Flickinger, Patrick Smith, and Dylan Young. That is the field that goes on down. As pace car is on down, you can see it'll be 10 laps for the heat. As we're about ready to take the green flag that will be here. And green flag is out. We're underway for heat one. The top two will advance in each of the heats. And then the LCQ which will be next week. The top three will advance from there. So I guarantee the drivers that are here that you see, they're going to be hoping that with these 10 laps, anything and everything can and will happen. So expect the unexpected. I'll probably leave this up so that way it'll be easier for me to remember the names because... Some of them I am not familiar with in who, but it's good to see a few that are back. Isaiah Bernique, though, out in front. And Anthony Logan now trying to take the lead. Is a little contact with Kev Shear there. And they're going to keep it together for the time being. Three wide as they came to the line. Lap number one in the books. Of course, lead lap do not matter. It is, of course, getting to the start-finish line in first or second. That is all that matters the most. Fitz Almriego. Oops. Kind of hanging around the rear for now. And the same for Connor Meyer and for Kyle Keith. But they may play some strategy. In the meantime, though, Keith Batson not wasting any time. He is going out for the front. And now Zach Rogers up in the front. Charles Sanford three wide for the battle for the lead. And at the line... Look at the 28 barely getting in. Now, if you notice, most of the field that you've seen here are either NRSL members, NRSL drivers, or people that just run in the, you know, people that run the NRSL at least for the time being. The only ones who are not that I am not familiar with that I really don't know of a whole lot is Casey Nananko in the 15, Mitchell Collins, who is a part of the... I want to say a couple other series outside of here, but has requested to be in this one here. And Anthony Logan, that's also it. I know for a fact that Isaiah Bernick, he's been a part of some special races, a part of this channel, and he is now in this race. As in the meantime, Charles Sanford, or, or I'm sorry, because um, of the... The cars are confusing me. I'm thinking that was Charles Sanford, but the wrong blue and white car. Was, oh, we got a car down low. That's that's Vince Almariego and another car hit. The, I think that may have been... Oh, it was Elijah Leonard in car number 27. So he is already having to rely on heat number two. Same for Vince Almariego. No caution. So there's now the top 18 that are going to be battling for those top two spots. As the 12 car, Josh was Coley led at the line. RJ Bishop now taking the lead. Mitchell Collins now, right now the top two. Charles Sanford now in that number 14 Panasonic Chevrolet there, the blue and white car. That's the, that's the one I was trying to think of there. I was thinking of the 13 for whatever reason. And herself vice president. Working his way with the pole sitter for this event, Isaiah Bernique. And then look at this, Kyle Keith, Connor Meyer, and Anthony Logan, I believe it was, in the 31. Or, I'm sorry, Patrick Smith, rather. I had the wrong RCR I'm thinking of now. I'm getting confused. The three wide for second. Look at that. The Bernique, Kyle Keith, and Connor Meyer all working together. Or at least against each other, rather. 
battling for that second position. I can't even speak anymore in my commentary skills. <laughs> right now, Meyer, the first one out in that position. Three wide you're seeing around midfield, or at least mid of the pack. And now Kyle Keith now working on the VP of Charles Sanford trying to take the lead. He knows he does not want to finish P1. He wants that. He does not want to finish P2. He wants to finish P1. I cannot speak for the life of me. He does not want to finish P1. Well, that would be bad. Moving on, though. Charles Sanford, they're going to do a crossover. Now, ironic enough, Charles Sanford, this is one of his stronger tracks that he has ran throughout his career. So this is something to keep in note about Charles Sanford in that 14. This is one of his good tracks. San Diego has lost the pack right there, and Elijah Leonard, he is just limping around off turn four. So like I said, those two cars, they will have backups, and they will be relying on the heat number two to see how they'll go from there. Again, both heats, they will be at the same video here, so going to be interesting to see what will take play. Is three wide for the top position. Charles Sanford, the vice president, Kev Shear, the sponsor for the NRSL, and Bobo Jones, an upcoming NRSL driver here in that number 20 Home Depot Chevrolet, going to try to battle, and in the end, Bobo Jones now going to take the lead. Zach Flickinger showing his promise. I'm wrong enough, he knows Coca-Cola very well. He's won in the NRSL uh, All-Star Race weekend that came here, so kind of, kind of funny how we're back at Coca-Cola, and here he is in second as at the line will be two laps to go. Don't count out Kev Shear though. He's got a really strong car. Kyle Keith in that fourth position. Going to swing up high. Patrick Smith and Keith Batson going to go down low. Zach Rogers hanging tough there in that 19 dodge there. So far the silent drivers have definitely been RJ Bishop, Dylan Young, Mitchell Collins, Jonathan Zorlin, Joshua Sicoli. Anthony Logan and Angel Navarro. Those drivers have definitely been silent all race long. No noise today. As Flickinger under fire from Anthony Logan. That's a battle for that second position. Kev Shear says, all right, you two can have your fun. Now I'm going to battle for that third position. What originally was going to be a battle for three wide. Now Kev Shear is going to barely stick his nose in. And it's going to go underneath. Is the bad boy Toyota right there. But we are coming to the white flag. It is looking good for Bobo Jones. However, I don't like that gap right there that he's got, but is this good news for him? White flag for Bobo Jones. Kev Shear now clearing for third. Here comes Kyle Keith. He's thinking otherwise. Zach Flickinger now trying to battle the 20 for position. Here comes Flickinger. Well, I thought it would look good for Bobo Jones. That went quickly out the door, because here comes Flickinger. Look at this, three wide for second. Kyle Keith, Kev Shear, their ballot tough for that position. Safe to say, Zach Flickinger's going to get in. Kyle Keith in the 24, he was one of the reserves. Here comes Charles Samver as the 15 makes a dive. Kyle Keith will get in, and it's P number two. Did the 15 actually come down? Pit oh, for a minute, I thought he did, but he did not. So, Zach Flickinger, Kyle Keith, they will represent the NRSL brand as far as the first heat is concerned. So, they will be out of the list for heat number two. So, our first two representatives in the NRSL side are Flickinger and Kyle Keith. So, real quickly, here are your results as you can see from the first heat. Vince Almariego, Elijah Leonard, they're going to get their backup cars ready to go. And they'll be back for heat number two. But for Flickinger and Kyle Keefe, they will be in the Inter 2003 big one, representing the Intercell brand. So as Heat 1 is concluded, as the standings are now official, Heat number 2 coming very soon. Don't go away, as it will be randomized yet again. Stay tuned for Heat 2. Drivers, start your and welcome back for heat number two, Isaiah Bernique. Well, he's got a strong car in the qualifying effort, but definitely to see if he can get the rebound for sure. We have already documented about Zach Flickinger and Kyle Keith. They have advanced to the Inter-2003 Big One for the main event. 
And now we will see who will advance from heat number two. After that, it will be the LCQ where the top three will advance from there. But I guarantee you, out of those 18 cars, whoever would be in those lucky spots right there, we shall see. Bobo Jones, he had a great chance. He missed out. And Vince Almariego and Elijah Leonard, they got their backup cars. They're ready to go. Pace car going to make a dive back down pit road. Ten laps again, like the first heat. We'll start this out in TV, too, because why not? Here we go. Green flag back underway. Here, Coca-Cola. Now, another thing, too, I want to mention is that the cautions are on for this event, just in case if there is a wreck, or at least a wreck that happens on the track where other cars are present that the officials will throw it for. So we'll see what happens. So now the million dollar question is going to be in play like as always who will be those two lucky drivers and the major question is will the drivers who were silent in the first heat make noise in the second heat is man they were nearly four wide for her second position and thankfully RJ Bishop hit the gas same for Keith Fats in there I do not blame them one bit that was a very risky move. But Isaiah Bernique, RJ Bishop they are currently the top two right now on the course and I just seen the 15 there man he was getting leaned upon by Kev Shear so we've looked through and by the way Zach Flickinger again he won the all-star race at Coca-Cola in the Cup Series um, a couple weeks ago is wow how did Zach Rogers and Keith Batson keep that together I do not know how but somehow some way they did Of course, Kyle Keith and Flickinger been in the Intercell Series for quite some time, too. Kyle Keith also really well known at the Super Speedway, so kind of not a surprise that both of them got in so they know their way. But look at some other notables there. Zach Rogers, of course. This is technically one of his home tracks that's there. Charles Sanford, the VP, who at the time of this recording just recently had his anniversary in the Intercell as a driver, so it's crazy to know that. Joshua Sicoli has been around the Intercell Series for quite some time. He's won one Super Speedway race. I believe that was over in April for the Xfinity Series. So that's interesting right there. Jonathan Zorlin has also won a, a Super Speedway as well. I believe he won Talladega. Anthony Logan and Elijah Leonard. How about that rebound for the Goldfish Chevrolet? Out in front right now are those two drivers. First one out would be R.J. Bishop in that 22. Bishop won the Daytona uh, 300 that went around for the Xfinity uh, season opener just this season. So he knows his super speedways pretty decently. And Joshua Sicoli now in the third position, now under fire again from R.J. Bishop. And I think the ones who are kind of eyeballs out at this point but are showing some really good stride, that's definitely Bobo Jones and Keith Batson. They, and actually, Batson, I forgot, he was actually in the battle for the Daytona 500 with uh, Jessica Sheldon and a couple others there. I believe uh, Johnny Gardner and Zach Rogers. I believe, ironic enough, those Charles Sanford, he's in the field. Zach Rogers, he's here. And Charles Sanford is here as well. Actually, where is Sanford? Unless I must have passed him. There he is. He was ninth, actually. He wasn't paying attention there. And Well, Elijah Leonard, he looks like he may be under fire for that second position. That's either going to be between RJ Bishop, Keith Batson, and... I'm looking who that 16... Yeah, 16. That's Mitchell Collins right there. And now RJ with the crossover move on Leonard. Bishop, a well-known veteran in the intercell. Leonard, a rookie this year in the Xfinity Series. Now Batson up into third. Collins now trying to take fourth. Here comes Keith Batson for second. That's probably not going to work, but he's got some inside line draft right now. And at the same time, now the 16 going to move up high. And Bishop probably hoping for that outside line to keep going. No, Keith Batson to the inside line for second. 
Anthony Logan in that 30s had a really strong car, but for how long though? Batson definitely has a really strong car in this second heat, but Logan gonna hang on and lead another lap, but lead laps don't matter. It's of course the last lap you wanna lead. Angel Navarro, Casey Nananko. Navarro really not having a good car at all in that 25 Ditec Chevrolet. Dylan Young, the Intercell president. Charles Sanford, the VP. Connor Meyer hanging around there. I don't know what's up with Nananko and Navarro. Both of those cars have just been nowhere up in the front in both the heats at all. And now Logan has lost the lead. Batson and Bobo Jones. I'll tell you what, Jones has kept that heat one car and that car has been strong but now patrick smith in the 31 a well-known xfinity driver in the intercell his second year there and here he is trying to take the lead right there and vince alvariego remember him and uh elijah leonard they hit the wall or at least they lost the draft they weren't able to compete anymore now alvariego definitely redeeming himself for sure but here comes zach rogers saying otherwise Two to go when we cross the line here for these drivers. And Logan, back to the point, trying to retake that lead from Zach Rogers as he's in the top two spot right now. Look at Kev Sheeran, the 23, Dylan Young, the 21, Mitchell Collins, the 16, all working together. Two to go at the line. Oh, man, Shear's trying not to let him miss. They're four wide for third. For a second, I thought I heard a crash, but nope, we're good. For now, at least, and wow, Navarro and Elijah Leonard, a little bit of contact there, but Collins has snuck out of that huge, deadly ordeal as he has now slipped a third, and don't forget, they wreck here. It's over. Now Rogers trying to take the lead from Logan. He's going to get it. Now Collins trying to take second as they come to the white flag here for Heat 2. This is going to be a big one here. Whoever doesn't get in, they're going to have to rely on the LCQ next week. White flag for Zach Rogers in the 19. Remember, he is from Massachusetts. This is technically one of his home tracks here. Mitchell Collins. Now Jonathan Zorl and Angel Navarro all trying to work together. Here comes Collins. Can't make a move. Here comes Kev Shear for third. That's probably not going to work. Zorlin may be the odd one out right here. Oh, here comes Mitchell Collins in the 16. Here comes the 17 of Jonathan Zorlin. And I think that'll be it right there. Kev Shear going to slip into third. That's going to be all she wrote right there. Mitchell Collins, Jonathan Zorlin. They're the other two that will represent the Intercell brand. So Zach Flickinger, Kyle Keefe, Jonathan Zorlin, and Mitchell Collins are the four that will represent of the seven in the NR 2003 big one. Boy, oh boy, what a show that was right there. So 16 cars will battle it out in the LCQ next week. As here are the, the full results. Unbelievable. And I was trying to look here how long, how many laps is the LCQ because I think I said it in the first, but I just want to double check and be sure on the how many laps is in the LCQ. And that would be 15 laps. So yeah, that's what I thought right there. Well, folks, that is it for both the heats that you've seen here. Next week we will we will show you the LCQ heat that will take play. The top three that will go in there. They will be the final entries for the Intercell and they will represent the Intercell brand. So who will join the four drivers that we have already shown, which is Flickinger, Keith, Collins, and Zorland? We'll find out next week. Till then, this is your boy D. Young signing off here from the Intercell. I'll see you guys later for the next video. Until then, goodbye everybody.